Well, um, I think it really all happened through the family environment. Mm -hmm. Our social time and when we had relatives round was usually about singing traditional Scottish songs or uh, reciting poetry or telling stories, that kind of thing. And I went to a, a, a tiny country primary school that only had two teachers and about 43 pupils I think at one point it, it got. So every Friday we would all be given a general music lesson. So by the time I left primary school I could read music. So I think the combination of the family environment and the school education really worked well together and that fueled my interest. Well, I began losing my hearing from the age of eight, and by the time I was 12, I was dependent on hearing aids. Right. And again, it was really through a yearly um, audio, audiological test that we had, that the, again, the whole primary school had within one day, um, that it was sort of picked up on. But I had actually started piano at the age of eight, mm. so I was already playing music. And when you're that age, anything is possible. Mm. You don't feel, I'm going deaf. So things like lip reading was happening without really my knowing it was happening. So everything was really quite organic. My teacher at the time, he said, well, Evelyn, you know, this drum, as he struck a drum, really resonates there. If that drum resonates, do we resonate? You know, can we actually pick up the resonance of that drum and allow it to be fed through the body rather than the sound being fed through the ear? So I took my hearing aids off and I actually heard less through here but more through the body and that really allowed me to concentrate on the whole journey of that sound, the impact of the sound, the resonance of the sound and taking care of how that sound ended. That was really important because before I was just sort of bang, 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 things like that. Well, I auditioned for two places because mm. um, I was still quite young, mm. the, the Royal College of Music and the Royal Academy of Music. Mm. The Royal Academy of Music was sort of quite sceptical. Yeah. They, they just said, there's no orchestra in this country or anywhere would employ a hearing impaired musician. Mm. And I said, well, I don't want to be in an orchestra. I want to be a soloist. I want mm. to be a solo percussionist. So that in itself was yet another sort of, whoa, you know, there's absolutely no visualization of that in their minds at all because the majority of people who left these institutions went into orchestras. They, they just had this barrier of a deaf musician, deaf musician, and therefore they could not accept a deaf musician. And, uh, and I felt that, well, if you're saying I'm of the standard to get in to this institution, mm -hmm. then I have to be let in, you know, no matter what someone's circumstances are, if they're of that standard, they must get in. It's as simple as that. Music is definitely a global means to connect mm. with each other mm. and within music, within that language, there are lots of dialects mm. really. So if I think about Indian music, I don't see that as a different language, mm. I see it as a different dialect and something that takes time. Um, I think things are changing. We, mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at the big picture, they are changing. Mm -hmm. There are sort of certain things that are every day are frustrating. There, there's all sorts of things, but most of all, it's communication. We need to communicate with each other to know how we need to function. What are the tools we need? Um, but most importantly, valuing each person and knowing that there is a place for each person to make a difference.